can take uh, text, you can take images, really anything in Keynote and bring it into your movie. So I'm going to play this here and just show you that this is text that I did in Keynote. It had a little bit of an animation to it. You can see that I did drop shadows, borders, things to really make it pop that your text, your titles in iMovie truly cannot do. Uh, you, you can get something a little bit more like this in we video, but you know, it's up to you. If you like Keynote and like playing around with this, this might be something that you want to uh, mess with. So to get started, first thing that you would want to do is find Keynote on your computer. Uh, mine is down here. If by any chance you don't see it down here, then you can go up to your search magnifying glass and type in your application. And when you type for it, it will launch it up if you click on it. Now, when you click on it, uh, what you can do to get it to stay down here is you can right click and go to your options and make sure you have the check on keep and dock. Anytime your apps are disappeared or have disappeared from here, you can just launch them up here. And then um, once you load them, keep them in the dock. That way they're there. So this is the file that I was working with here just to kind of show you. And then I'll go backwards. This is just text and I have applied an animation to it. But first what I did is I formatted it and I formatted it with a font of my choosing. Um, I did a size and then I went in and I played around with the advanced settings here where you can do your outlines. Notice if you turn your outline off or if you click off of it, it just takes away that boldness, that pop out uh, against your background, which is your video. Uh, same thing with the shadow. You know, it just seems like it's missing something until you put that shadow on. Um, now just to show you how to get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and close up this file all together with my red dot. Uh, I'm not going to save this because this was just practice, so I deleted that. But uh, going back here from the top, whenever you open up Keynote, it's going to bring up this screen. All you're going to need to do is do a basic white screen and click Create because, as you can see, I did a green background because that's what you need to remove uh, your background in and put it into iMovie. So with these, because this is presentation software and it looks a lot like Google Slides or anything you've seen like that before, these are here as placeholders, but you truly do not need them. So usually what I do, the first thing I do is I come in here and I click and drag to highlight all those. I hit Backspace or delete on my keyboard or I do command a command a will select all and that does the same thing you just delete so I went in and I changed my background to green and then I started adding my stuff now my stuff could be media such as pictures a falcon logo whatever you want to bring in and animate or you know do something to or you can just be like me right now and stick with plain simple text now when you start with plain simple text it is literally plain and simple and there's nothing to it so I'm just gonna do Falcon Productions here because why not I don't really have a, a video idea yet or anything Falcon Productions, add an S. Okay, um, this is where we go in and we start formatting our text over here and you go to your, instead of your style, there's text, there's a range. You go to text and that's how you do all of your options. Now there are some fonts to choose from, a little more than what you have in your editors, uh, like for Wii Video, but what I will be showing you how to do uh, later, at some point, would, I'm gonna do a whole new lesson on that, is how to go out on Google Chrome, find fonts and install them. So that way your Mac that you use has a lot more fonts there right now we're just going to stick with something basic impact is a good thick font that usually looks good for titles and it's good to start with i'm going to go over here to my size and notice that just brings it up one point at a time that takes forever so if i see them at 44 and it's not filling up the whole screen then i'm going to go in there and try i don't know maybe 400 and hit enter that's way too big so i'm going to come over here and maybe type in 300 and see if that is any better and that is looking a lot better now keep in mind that what you see green right now will be video so you want your font to be nice and big if it's a title if you're doing something like a lower thirds if somebody's being interviewed you'd probably make it a lot smaller but this is a title I want it to be a little bit more dramatic so I'm going to go in and do some dramatic work to it such as applying an outline now that outline, the thicker it is, the better for your outline, but you don't want it to be too thick because then it looks like a bleeding Sharpie that just looks like it's way too thick there around the edge. So you find the happy medium with whatever font you're using. Same thing with the shadow as well. Now, whenever you put a check on the shadow, you're going to see that you give, you have given yourself a lot more control and options now. You have a blur, and as you up that blur point, 
it literally fuzzes it a little bit. Um, your angle is going to do exactly what you think. It just moves your shadow around in its placement. The offset is how far off and away from that text or that object you are, your shadow is going to go. And then opacity is your see-throughness. You probably won't, really wouldn't need anything with that. Um, but then what you can also do is change this from, uh, you know, like a basic gray, which is the default. Go to your text color, change it to something that you think would look good in your video. Now keep in mind, you want some contrast. So if you do dark borders, you're going to want a light fill and vice versa, meaning opposite of that. If you do a dark fill, you would want a light border, light shadow, something to help that pop. So um, this looks pretty decent. It might not be my best work, but just for the purpose of moving on, I'm going to show you how to animate. So when you go to your animate tab, you have a build in animation an action animation and a build out. So build in is exactly what you think it is. It's how your animation will appear and build in on your screen. You have all kinds of different effects. I encourage you guys to go ahead to explore these, see what you like. When you apply an animation, you can change the duration, which is how slow it is or how fast it is. And at any point, you can go ahead and click preview. So when I do that, that animation is going to stay animating for a little time versus the default, which was a real quick boom. There it is and is done. OK, so this is something that you want to play around with. Think about how it's going to look in your video. Um, if you want to apply other actions to you could, but you don't necessarily have to action effects so there's not as many but it's like what it does after it animates in and then how it leaves the screen this is totally random and I think looks pretty ugly but what I'm going to do is go ahead and see if it allows me to preview my whole thing so you can watch the whole thing by just coming up here and clicking on play and then that will show you what it all looks like together and then it puts it into full screen you may have to tap enter on your keyboard and then tap enter to go to your next effect and then your next effect out. But again, I'm not really liking too much. Uh, sometimes less is more and you don't want to overdo it. So the reason why I showed you that is I wanted to show you how to go in and, and take out all those animations because I think it's fine to just do a build in or just an action. So I'm going to go into build out and I'm going to change that to none and go to action and change that to none as well and just stick with the build in. Okay, so once uh, you have your animation set, you want to turn this into a movie. How you turn this into a movie is you go up to file up here next to Keynote. You go to export because you are exporting it out of Keynote and into a movie. So you click on movie and then you have export your presentation. For slides, we only have one slide here, okay? As the year goes on, you might have some more if you use this as your template file. Uh, but for now, I'm going to do from one to one because this is the only slide that I want to do. Uh, I'm going to change my resolution or set it to 1080p. Click next. And this is so important, guys. You need to make sure that you are saving this to your Google Drive folder like you do pretty much everything that you are working on so that you could pull this at home or in another classroom if you're at editing. So make sure you're saving into your folder and give it a name. So I'm just going to call this uh, Falcon Productions Practice. So that will create this as a movie. Okay. Now, if you want to come back to this and edit tomorrow or make changes to this, you want to edit this keynote file. You want to save this keynote file so that you can edit it another time. So what you just watched me do is export this keynote file as a movie. But if you want to add changes to this tomorrow, you have to have this saved. So save your keynote file, get into the habit of doing this every work session that you have. Go to file, save as, or save really doesn't matter and save it in your folder just like you did your export before. So I'm going to call this uh, Falcon Productions Keynote just so that I know that's my Keynote file and not my video. Go ahead and hit save. And then like every application that you guys are in, when you are done at the end of the period, don't just close your Chromebook or don't just peace out and be like, yo, I'm done. Make sure you hold down that command Q so it goes away. It's no longer loaded with a dot under there. It's ready to go for the next student. Now that I'm in iMovie, I'm going to delete this one that I had and just show you how to pull in your video. Um, if you go to Finder, just like you do with your clips that you import from Shared Drive, you're going to import your movie file that you exported. So you just got to go to the right spot, navigate to your 401 files, your digital media footage, your semester one, and then there we have it. 
So if you scroll over, you're going to see kind over here, and that shows the kind of file it is. So the MPEG-4 movie files, those are obviously video files. These are keynote files. Remember, that's your work in progress file. You cannot pull in a work in progress keynote file into iMovie because it's not a movie file. But you can take your Falcon Productions animation that you just made and drag that in right over top, and now you can apply your effect. Now, this looks like it's actually the wrong one. I got the wrong one there. I'm going to do my practice animation. There I go. Okay. That's the one that I showed you guys. So, at the beginning here, if I zoom in on my frame slider, you're going to see you have empty frames. There's nothing going on. What you can do is trim that out because this is a movie file now. You can put it wherever you want. When you play it, you're going to see your animation. Now, we got a chroma key, green screen. Just get out that green so it actually looks like text and not a video now. So to do that, you go up here to your video overlay settings. And remember when we did cutaways, you're not doing a cutaway now. You're doing green and blue screen, and that will automatically pull that out. Now you have really nice looking text here in iMovie that you could not do with the text settings here. You just had to have a little bit more of extra control here in Keynote, okay? Likewise, you can do the same thing. You can pop this into Wii Video if you had Wii Video loaded. Pull it in from your drive and do the chroma key settings there. It is built into Wii Video. It should work okay uh, with no problems. But that is basically it, guys. Uh, what I really want you to spend time doing is getting into Keynote, saving a file, playing around with it, and then possibly exporting it, you know, if you're ready today. Uh, what I just did was loaded back up Keynote to show you when you do load up Keynote, you would probably want to go up to File Open to pull in that file from your drive from the previous work session. Notice when I did that, it remembered that I was there, okay? And what you can do is up here, you can navigate through this way. You can go and like this way over here through the drop down instead of going to the side. But when you do that, you can get in uh, just like you always do. Notice it grays out the movie files. It will not let you open up those movie files, but it will let you open up the Keynote files because that's what Keynote does. That's what Keynote knows, okay? When you do that, it will appear. It will show up. There it is. Work your magic. Have some fun. I'll show you in another video how you can go onto Google, go to some font installer websites, and install some nice-looking fonts into your, your Mac that you use.